Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Young Family in our YouTube channel. Today is January 2nd, 2022. It's beautiful, sunny Sunday morning. Happy New Year to everyone. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to grow calla lilies. Actually, this video contains two parts. In the first section, I'm going to give you a little bit introduction about calla lilies. Then I'm going to clarify some important things. In the second section, I'm going to transplant this potted calla lilies into the ground. Stay tuned. Calla lily is a semi-evergreen perennial flowering plant which produces large pure white trumpet-shaped flowers. In the middle of the flower, there is yellow color finger-like spadix. The flowers stand out against a long stalked large heart-shaped or arrowhead-shaped glossy dark green leaves. Calla lily is native to Africa, but now you can find this plant growing everywhere in the world. Typically, Kelly lily can flower from later spring to fall. It can last a long time. For this flower, it began to bloom in late of November, but right now it's early in January, so it lasts for over one month. You still can see this flower a little bit fresh, even though it can find a little bit faded, because in the last two or three weeks, this flower was soaked in the rain water for a while. Calla lilies are fantastic cut flowers. They are pretty much easy to arrange. They can last up to two weeks in a vase. Calla lilies with white flowers are most common and popular. Even though calla lilies come with different color flowers such as pink, yellow, purple, and red. Calla lilies are one of the most popular flower arrangements for different occasions, including wedding especially for white calla lily flowers. When I read some articles on the website about calla lily, there's something really confusing, even controversial. I'd like to clarify some important things based on my knowledge and experience. Regarding calla lily is an annual or perennial plant, it really depends on where do you live. Calla lily is winter hardy in zones 8 to 10. If you live in some cold area, such as zones 3 to 7, you might treat Cananinia as an annual plant. In fall or winter, when the temperature goes down to freezing temperature, frost will kill the plants. If you grow your plant in a pot, just move the plant into the room. If you grow your plant in the ground, you have to dig it up, store indoors, and replant next spring. However, if you live in some warm areas, such as zones 8 to 10, you can treat your calla lily as perennials. You can just leave them outdoors. They can survive over winter with no problem. Regarding calla lily, like full sun or partial sun, it really depends on where do you live. If you live in some area with cool summer, you can grow your plant in full sun. However, if you live in some area with a hot summer, you'd better grow your plant in partial sun because middle-day hot sun will burn leaves. Regarding calla lily, is a deciduous or evergreen plant. It really depends on where do you live and cultural conditions. If you live in some cold area during the fall when the temperature goes down and the air is dry, the leaves of a calla lily is going to dry and die. The plant will go dormant. However, if you live in a warm area such as us, we live in sunny Southern California with very mild climate. During the winter time, you can see here, these plants still keep green. They are not going to go dormant. Even though calla lily is an outdoor plant by nature, but it can perform wonderfully as an indoor plant. Regarding calla lily needs more water or less water. Before I answer this question, I'd like to show you this plant. This is another small calla lily plant in a small pot. Actually, this small pot does not have a hole in the bottom. Let me show you. You see here, no hole in the bottom. I have grown this plant in this pot for a couple of years. In the past several years, I have watered a lot, but this plant never died. 
Actually, in the past several months, I just left this plant in the area next to the sprinkler. So this plant always has a lot of water in this part. So you can see here, there's a lot of water in this part. To be honest, in the last two or three weeks in Los Angeles, we rained a lot. So this plant is always soaked in this part with a lot of water. But as you can see here, this plant is doing fantastic. We can check out the roots. You can see the roots, the rhizome. It's pretty healthy, you see? It's a white roots. You see the white roots right here? And right here. I don't think the roots are rotted. So you can see the whole plant is doing fantastic. It is pretty healthy. Calla lily prefers to grow as a marginal aquatic plant. That's why you can easily find this plant on the edge of ponds and streams. This is a wonderful benefit for those people who like to water plant a lot. So based on my experience, if you water this plant a lot, or even though soak this plant in the water for a while, you are not going to kill this plant. Actually, to be honest, this plant likes to be kept in an area with continuous moisture. Even though calla lilies are beautiful plants, but unfortunately, calla lily is toxic to humans and pets. The toxicity is not just limited to a specific part of the plant. The whole plant is poisonous. It is said the most dangerous part are roots. Calla lily can cause skin irritation, such as rash, for those people who have sensitive skin. Calla lily might be a problem for fish if you grow calla lilies in a pond because fish can live the plants. In our front yard in the garden bed, there are some calla lily plants. I'm not sure they are the exact same variety or just a different variety. Because a couple of months ago, when we moved right here, all the plants were cut because of house renovation. But now you can see the plant growing very fast and they're doing fantastic we will see whether we can see any difference when the plant is going to bloom this spring. Now let's go and find a spot for this plant. Actually, I have already chosen a spot for this plant. It is located in our front door yard. It is at the eastern side of, of my house. It is kind of a shade area. But early in the morning, this plant still can receive dappled sunlight. It is good for this plant because we live in Southern California. During the summertime, it is pretty hard during the daytime. I already dug a hole in the ground. I put a, this potted plant in the ground. So first, let's check out the label. It is lace cap hydrangea, pink color. In April 2020, I ground the layer this hydrangea. In July 2020, I potted up this plant into this container. So you can see here, this is a hydrangea stem. But unfortunately, for some reason, this hydrangea died. So basically, I didn't intend to grow calla lily into this container. But for some reason, it grow from this container. I think it might be when I dig up this hydrangea from the ground, there's some like uh, bulbs or just a rhizome in the ground, in the soil. So that's why later they grow up. So you can see here, it is pretty big. Calla plant. Actually, as you know, Calla is pretty easy to grow. It is very vigorous. I don't t take care of all this plant, but you can see here, it grows very fast. It is a fantastic, beautiful plant. First, I'd like to put some like chicken manure at the bottom of this hole as base fertilizer to enrich the soil. And mix well. Now I'm going to remove the plant from this container. 
As you can see here, there are some roots come out from the drainage hole. So first, I'd like to squeeze the container. The soil inside is pretty wet, so a little bit sticky. Okay, come out. Wow, it's beautiful. You see, guys, take a look at here. A lot of roots. Some roots are big, some are small roots. It's beautiful. So, what's this? It's kind of fruit. Not sure what kind of fruit. Might it be it's lemon. I'm not sure exactly because I once put this container just next to the lemon tree. So might be lemon dropped to the this ground this container. So anyway. So I just sit this plant at the bottom of this hole. So I'm going to loosen some roots. You see, it's pretty easy to loosen the roots. So I'm going to put some garden soil because you know you see here the ground soil is pretty wet and very sticky. So just mix well with the garden soil with the ground soil. going to put some mulch on the top of the soil to keep the soil moist and also keep the roots and the ground cool, especially for the, during the summer. So all this mulch is, is free, it's kind of like chopped wood chips. So later I'm going to water this plant. If you like today's video, please like, share, leave comments down below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.